So, Mike, what is Puff the Magic Dragon in Hungarian? What? The song Puff the Magic Dragon? Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. No, I don't know either. But I know someone who does. And that is the expat let. What, Mark Hedberg? Yeah. Well, let's get him in then. Go on then. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. Vet- Veterinary Ramblings calling Mark Hedberg. Come calling in. Mark. Calling Mark Hedberg. Veterinary Ramblings calling Hedberg. Are you reading us? Over. Are you, Mark? Are you into sailing? No, I just I couldn't help but admiring the little yachts that are hanging on the wall oh, behind that. you. Oh, those have been up there forever. Uh, th- this is my dad's old office, and he liked them. He hung them up there. Ah, right. right. No, I uh, uh, play some very bad folk guitar, um, teaching myself uh, weird computer stuff. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, aside from that, I just well, I, I like learning interesting new things. That's, so that's great. So tell me about your guitar. What, what have we got? Uh, let's see. There is a basic old uh, six-string folk. Uh, that's that's downstairs. I, I got a steel string six in the back over there. It's next to the twelve-string ovation that I inherited from Dad. It's one of those. Oh, very nice. I've always wanted a twelve-string. It's it's a nice guitar. Very nice to play. I don't play it nearly as often as, as I should, just because it, it is it's a little finicky to keep in tune. All right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's a, a six-string bantar. Although I think the British call it a banjo lele. Basically, it's a it's a guitar strung banjo. Right. Yes. Yes. yes I know they're slightly longer, aren't they? Just a bit. Yeah. And it's got the it's got the six strings. It's played like a guitar, but it sounds like a banjo. Anyway, I am not Eric Clapton. I am I am basically a, a, a decent folk guitarist. Uh, borrowed uh, Tony Chadwick's uh, guitar once at BSAVA. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was that was fun. They took uh-huh. a break, and so I sang right for the old Peter Paul and Mary song. That was fun. Where, where was that? Great. On the stage, on the main stage at the BSAVA. No, 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 the Malt House, where they, where they, and the uh, couple other guys used to come together and, and do that little band thing. Oh yes, I, rec- I vaguely recall this. So you, uh, you, you hijacked, hijacked, and jumped in and uh, and did a gig on your own. No, just one song. It was. Yeah. What, did, what did you play? Uh, it was a song called Right Field. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary sing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were great. They were great, weren't they? Cool. Uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, of course, is my favourite one of theirs. No, oh, yeah, it's a good. I, I got you know two little girls, and so Puff the Magic Dragon actually comes out. Uh, nicely. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. the shark and Shanky the Sheffield. It was so popular; it was actually translated into Hungarian. Not wow! wow. Did, did, did by you or by the Hungarian? No, 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 no. It, it's it's a well-known song in Hungary. That's wow! So Hungarian puff the magic dragon. That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, oh, that's that's, that's got to be in it, hasn't it? Mm. That's, that's that's one of the highlights of the show. <laughs> it's one of the highlights of the series. That. Absolutely. Yeah, they are the same. Oh boy, if that's a job, you are in trouble. <laughs> you, you can bet I'm going to be looking it up tomorrow and I'll be playing Puff the Magic Dragon in Hungarian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look it up now and see if I can find it. Puff the Magic Dragon on YouTube. <laughs> it, it, it must be there. Like I said, it's a very popular song. I want to get to grips with our guest, Mark, here, who, yeah. who is known, known across the internet as Expat Vet. So, Mark, I want to ask you. Ex Pat from where? Um, God only knows some days. <laughs> okay. uh, once upon a time, I was born in the United States of America, wild west coast, a place called Oregon. It's All right. three hours south of Washington State and several hours north of California. And if you go too far west, you get wet because it's the Pacific Ocean. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, my parents, uh, well, my father was an English teacher and as in, in 19... Early 80s, it was not uh, a raging career path in the United States. Would you believe they speak English there? Yeah, I'm but not, it's two nations, that, two but... nations divided by a common language, isn't it? Well, <laughs> says the guy from a country the size of Pennsylvania with something like 15 accents. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, in 1984, we emigrated to Saudi Arabia because okay. they're the teachers. 
And, and where else is Saudi Arabia? Um, East Coast, a um, place called Dammam. It's mm -hmm. about uh, 400 or so kilometers south of Iraq. In 1991, that was suddenly 300 kilometers south of Iraq. And so we decided to uh, move out at some haste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't remotely as dramatic as, as the TV shows say. I mean, it was the, the evacuation was issued. So we went to the States for a few months. And then that famous 100-hour war later, um, we eventually went back to Saudi on the West Coast. It's the one entertaining thing, I suppose you could say, if there is at all anything entertaining about war, no, there isn't, is that uh, these days they call it the, the first Gulf War, Desert oh. Storm. Yeah, but you know, we were in the Middle East for 16 years, and that was at least Gulf War number four. Trust me, we counted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they didn't admit the others were war, did they? They were, they were conflicts. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Anyway, so uh, yeah. 2001, I went to university in Budapest okay. and uh, qualified what? 2006. Why, why Budapest? Um, well, mom's Hungarian, so I speak the language. Right. Uh, but the other side of things, though, is that, uh, you know, my parents are teachers. We can't afford, you know, you, we can't afford university in the United States. Okay. No? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, people Pretty, qualifying today, yeah, people qualifying today have something like three or four hundred thousand dollars in debt, and they'll be paying that off for a long time. Whoa! Wow, three or four hundred dollars is that just as vets or people qualifying as anything? That's qualifying as a veterinarian, right? In the states, I imagine, I imagine four or five uh, years of university for any other particular subject probably has something fairly similar, right? Because mm. we have a fair few. Americans coming over to England to to train here as vets, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think they they have to pay something like I, I don't know fifteen years ago it was about well, seventy or eighty thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit more now, but yeah, well, you know what they call in the states here in the U.S. We call that a bargain. Wow, gosh, we're pretty lucky over here. How much was it in Budapest then? Um, well, this was this was the better part of oh, twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it was about it was about uh, ten thousand. Well, it was about ten thousand dollars a year. Wow. Okay. So it, it you know it, it took some time to pay that back. Yes. I mean, like I said, hmm. we we were not bazillionaires, but it was still it was an EU recognized degree. Yep. It was an English language degree. Yep. And it was so was. any place that accepted an EU degree, and quite a few places did, um, it was good. Mm -hmm. yep. So naturally, I went off to Saudi Arabia again. So one of my vets uh, qualified in, uh, in Budapest and had a great time. Mm -hmm. um, he he didn't learn any Hungarian, uh, but you you speak fluent Hungarian. I do. My mother insisted. That's one of the most difficult languages, apparently, isn't it? Apparently, more difficult than Mandarin. I've never tried to learn Mandarin, so I very much may have to take your word on it. <laughs> it, it does have to do with the Hungarian language and the well, the English style languages, uh, they do have a different approach to okay. words. So without giving you my mother's uh, four hour dissertation on the subject, because she has a master's mm -hmm. and stuff and she loved talking about it, God rest her soul. Um, when we say apple in English and we want to talk, say how the apple belongs to me, we say my apple. And so it's a separate word. Yep. Whereas in Hungarian, the word is almo, for apple and when you want to refer to the apple being your own property you say all map so you don't add a word you change the ending of the word right and so mm -hmm. the the approach of the language is different but actually the language is surprisingly logical it's just difficult for people who speak in the you know western style to switch over the logic yeah you have yeah. some a lot more declensions as well i believe don't you like uh, it, as in latin you have an accusative uh, no, that's my wife. She accuses me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I believe you can put the words in any order. Yeah, within reason. I mean, the it, it is understandable. There are a few combinations that aren't particularly used just because it, well, sounds weird, but it works. So right. normally the word, it, in a very limited approach, the, the, the most important word comes first. Hmm. So the boy's riding the bicycle. Are you trying to emphasize the boy or the bicycle? 
I see. So the boy is riding the bicycle or the bicycle is being ridden by the boy? Actually, yes, almost exactly. Right, okay. Hmm. Wow. But very different to German, where you can wait half an hour before you get the verb. You have to try and remember who was doing what at the start, or who it was that was doing the doing at the start, and then half an hour later when the sentence finishes, or when yeah. one extra long word finishes, you think, yeah. oh yes, I can piece it together now. Yeah, hmm. German's one language I, I never managed to learn, but... Uh... Well, Hedberg, everyone thinks is German. It's actually six generations back Swedish. Right. So Wait, my so my grandfather's well. great grandfather emigrated to the United States in 18 something. So, I mean, you know, we don't speak Swedish. We don't even pronounce the name right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so hang on. So, so you went off. To, you went off to college in Budapest. And did yep. your veterinary degree? Mm -hmm. And then you went back to Saudi Arabia. I did. Carry on. Well, this was the uh, the same uh, clinic that I'd originally volunteered at back in my lovely, you know, pre-college, pre-university days when someone's trying to find out what on earth they want to do. So, right. if I was in, you know, I guess you could say seeing practice, seeing a few other things. And it was, as far as veterinary medicine is concerned, I actually got into it fairly late. I was in my early teens, uh, mid-teens when I kind of got into the whole, well, actually, this, this is actually pretty interesting stuff. There's, there's, mm -hmm. you know, I could get, I could get to like this. In fact, I do think I like it. And so it was, it was different in one sense, because you do often meet veterinarians and veterinary nurses of, you know, we've, you know, we've wanted to be vets and nurses since the year dot, since the time we ever remembered. And I, I don't mean that in any sort of negative way. It's just mm -hmm. that I, I certainly can imagine not wanting to be a vet because, well, I mean, you know, I was six years old. I probably wanted to be a pilot or, you know, a firefighter. What do you know? I'm the big red truck with the flight, you know? So it's. Sure. Okay. Sure. Anyway, so, uh, you know, we, you learned a lot before the practice. You learned a lot uh, before university. So you, you kind of went in there with, uh, I mean, I, 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 I didn't work there as a vet. I was a very, very glorified, um, not even technician, but just a, an assistant. Mm -hmm. so, you know, while I am not, by in any in any sense of the term, I am not a veterinary nurse or technician, um, I started out scrubbing kennels. Okay. And right. so I got a very deep appreciation for, you know, the, un, you know, the unglamorous side of veterinary medicine. For sure. For sure. So that was when you realized that you'd quite like to do this thing. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I must admit, I found the diagnosing and the treatment and the surgery somewhat more attractive than scrubbing the kennels. But you know, I did kind of get that one doesn't happen without the other. Okay. Okay. No, I I was in Jeddah. Um, I suppose late late seventies, uh, nineteen seventy seven, seventy eight, something like that. Mm. My father works out there. No and kidding. I am impressed. It was it was a rough old place actually. And I, I don't, I, the, my, my memory of it is, is, um, is limited, but I, I don't think that many people had pets and many, many people had a, a great love of, of pet animals out there. So I just wondered how, how the practice was in terms of, of its, uh, its clientele. Did, did, did people come along wanting big things done to their pets? Do they come along with, with, with an expectation that uh, one visit would do or that they were going to spend a lot of money doing investigations? How, how would it compare to, to American clinics? Um, American clinics is a funny one in, that, in the sense of, for all that I am an American, I've never actually worked in the United States. Okay. So I can certainly compare it to uh, British clinics by all means, mm -hmm. and I can compare it to Hungarian clinics. And it's, uh, it's certainly very, very different. I mean, how it was in the 70s, I can certainly imagine very, very rough in the sense of there wasn't a hell of a lot out there, aside from the generals in the general city. The big, the, the really big building uh, work only really started in the 70s and, and 80s as well. Right. So, you know, by the time I was there in 2007, 8, 9, well, working as a vet out there in, in 2007, 8, 9, and so on, that was very, you know, Jeddah was very much a metropolitan city, so to speak. Not quite Dubai, but there was certainly, you know, it was certainly a city and no mistake. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the veterinary world, um, the, the equipment and the drugs were very limited. 
So it was, you had what you had for uh, cattle medicine, horse medicine, sheep medicine, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. A small animal medication was certainly, there were certainly more available when I was working there than say 10 or 15 years previously, but it's still, it still was by no means uh, a widespread. Right. It was entertaining in one sense is that, you know, I went through university and, you know, oh, pharmacology, oh, three semesters, oh man, what a waste of time here. We're just going to go and, you know, go out to the clinic and we'll just take the dirt off the shelf, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I got out to Jeddah and, uh, oh, look, there's the shelf. Right, that's a really small shelf. <laughs> And so we had to figure out what kind of uh, large animal medicines could be titrated down to the right size for a dog or a cat, what was mm-hmm. at all safe to use. And mm-hmm. then, you know, there were times where I, I was very willing to go back and, you know, find my old pharmacology professor and say, thank you very much. You were right. And I was a pig headed dummy. <laughs> you know, you're, they, you're we, not we, referring we, to stuff like Immobilon here, are you? Uh, no, no. I mean, we're talking, you know, blood pressure medications, sedatives, antibiotics. I mean, it just the, the, the list goes on. We used a lot of human medication simply because guess what? That's what we had. Yeah. Right. And so it was, it was purely small animal you're doing, companion animal. Yeah. All, yeah. Yeah. Most of it. We had occasional stuff that came in that was a little bit unusual. I mean, my six, you know, week six. Uh, on the job, uh, the, the driver comes in with the cell phone because, of course, you know, the shake, the prince, the big boss doesn't come in. He sends in the driver with the cell phone and then, you know, hi, cool. uh, you know, this is Dr. Mark. Can I help you? And so basically he says, well, yeah, uh, we have this crocodile. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> well, wow. yeah. And so, well, okay. Um, uh, what, what's wrong with the, the crocodile? Well, he's two meters long and really mean. I can't fix that. What's his medical problem? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the medical problem um he had a uh, a prolapsed penis if i'm allowed to say that on spotify and youtube and all that I, we, we said care. worse we said oh, worse. Very, good. very good yeah so uh, basically um due to uh, due to constipation it had the organ had prolapsed it yeah. became injured and a partial amputation was required. I was going to say that's, uh, that's yeah. not too difficult, actually. Amputation of it. Well, I've not done a crocodilian. I've done a few other reptile penal activists. Bob- bobbits, I think they call them. Yes, they? six weeks into my first job after university, sole charge of that Western Saudi Arabia, 1,200 kilometers from the nearest referral hospital. Yeah. That's uh, my old exotics professor. And, went, and, you, sure. and you did a John Wayne Bobbit on a two meter crocodile. Pretty much. Under local. Oh. Was it was it any less wild afterwards? No, he's uh, he's hated me ever since. Mm. And to be fair, I can't really blame him. No, no, but because really. we, you know, because the, uh, the, the 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 exotics vet told me that the ketamine was, you know, general anesthesia was really going to be a problem because we were in the, you know, rather far away from, you know, modern monitoring equipment and mm. ventilators and things like that because we were next to a swimming pool about twenty kilometers north of Jeddah. So yeah, we. Uh, we grabbed him, we tied him up, we gave him a truckload of local, covered his eyes, turned him upside down, and went snippety snip. Wow. Right. Wow. Easy. Gosh. I'm not surprised he didn't like you afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, to be fair, he would he would have cheerfully returned the favor if he could. So, you know, fair is fair, you know. I, I... <laughs> and he wouldn't have used local, would he? How many reunions have you attended with him? A couple, actually. Um, a few, January 2020. <laughs> Just before the pandemic, I actually got invited back. Right. Um, not for him, but uh, for for a, another uh, a, another a uh, patient. But they uh-huh. remembered me years later and said, "Hey, I want to come in." And... Yeah. So, so did you meet the crocodile again? Oh, I did. And he remembered you. He remembers. So anyone that tells you reptiles are stupid and slow and forget, oh no. Oh wow. They they just kind of float in the pool. And they watch you walking by, and so yep, they remember me. Wow, it was a bit bigger then as well, wasn't it? Because they, they carry on growing throughout life, I think, don't they? Crocodiles. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't wander over with a tape measure. I will be honest. Did, did you not? Oh. Did not? Okay. Did, no, I, I pushed my luck enough the first time. Oh, you you, you didn't throw a fish or anything. <laughs> what, what did you say, Julian? I can't compete with that. A crocodile penis amputation, that's pretty, 
That's pretty yeah. out there, isn't it? It's pretty radical surgery, isn't it? It's very good for free beers with the U.S. Embassy Marines. Why? Because they like how they want their penises amputating? Now, apparently, if you tell a story they can't top, you get a beer. Ah. Okay, so that would do it. That would do it. Hey, that- you know, I didn't make the rules, but I accept it. Yeah. Where else in Saudi were you? Were you in the UAE at all? Uh, just for a conference. Uh, but I, I worked mm. almost exclusively in Saudi Arabia. Right. Mm. Okay, so so you, you qualified, you went mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Right, carry on. I'm, I'm trying to work out where where you are expat from. Well, if we consider the fact that I was, I'm was i an American citizen and born in the States, then I'm, I'm still an expat to this very day. Right, okay. So, so carry on then. So you went back to Saudi. What on mm-hmm. earth brought you to the UK? Um, you know, in in between uh, graduating and going to uh, Saudi, I'd uh, gotten married, as this one sometimes does. Right. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia being what it, it's, you know, Saudi Arabia is a fascinating country in many respects, but it's not really fem- f- uh, friendly for the, f- the, the women. Yeah. I mean, you can you can do teaching jobs. But in terms of, you know, civil, I, I make no attempt to apologize for Saudi Arabia. You know, it is absolutely what it is. Um, when I was out there working as a vet, you know, I learned a hell of a lot. Um, and it was, I'm, I'm really happy I was out there. But long term, you know, my, my wife is a teacher as well. And it was important for, you know, her career as well. So long term in there, it wouldn't, it, was, sure. it wouldn't have been fair for her. And, and to be honest, with the veterinary world in Saudi Arabia, it was very much first opinion. There was no real economy that would support advances, referrals, things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we do basic pinning, um, wiring fractures, things like that. Um, one camel that broke his jaw, so we ended up having to uh, plate his uh, mandible in two places. Uh, that was a mess. <laughs> Honestly, the, the, the neighbors thought we were great just because what the hell are they bringing you this time? So, you know, we, we were the vet hospital in, in Jeddah for the most part. And so 99%, well, 99% of it was the small animal stuff. And every now and then. Right. right. And, and a lot of falconry, isn't there in Saudi Arabia? That, that's yeah, good business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of the, most of the falcons were, were tended to be around the capital city, Riyadh. So mm-hmm. that was a bit out of my stomping. We, got, we saw the occasional soccer. Uh, mm-hmm. if you are the, 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 the falcon there, but it was, you know, if, if uh, the majority of birds we saw were more parrots, um, African yeah. greys and Amazons and things like that were, were popular pets as mm-hmm. well as cats, because due to, uh, uh, some misunderstandings, dogs were considered unclean. And mm-hmm. so cats were more popular pet among the, the citizens of Saudi Arabia. Although from what I understand, and I, I do not speak as any kind of uh, expert on Islam, but from what I understood from one of my colleagues um, who was, it's apparently a mistranslation. So dogs are considered unclean. And so if you have washed for prayer and uh, you touch a dog, you have to wash for prayer again. Right. Which, once you've washed for prayer, there is a list of things that you have that you can't touch because you have to wash for prayer again. And for some reason, the dog got pulled out of the list as going, oh, wait, this is extra bad. I, I am happy to be corrected. I was this was a, a, a no. colleague of mine who was who was uh, uh, Muslim. And he told me this was the correct. And if it's wrong, I do apologize. But this is the, this is what I understood. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've not I've not heard that, but uh, I, can, I can well believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, after three years in Saudi Arabia, uh, I got a job in uh, Dover, in Kent. Right. No one does. Okay, so slightly different um, uh, geography. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was a lot more green. Mm. And white. Yeah. And white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the White Cliffs in Dover is gorgeous. I mean, it's it's oh. it was just really it was certainly a sea change, and it was a, it was a great way to a great way to meet the United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Because being a border town and a crossing town, it was, in some respects, almost familiar. Right. Yes, a lot of, uh, lot of the transient population, and and myself included, I was there two years. So, right. Sure. Sure. 
look, there's a Hungarian restaurant in town you that was very nice. You know, that I means there's all kinds of stuff there. Okay. Yeah. And then, then you moved up to the Cambridgeshire area, did you not? Oh, I did. God, Manchester. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And that's where you you were working at the College of Animal Welfare. That's right. That's right. And then some some guy named Mike Brampton came through with the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I knew you before that, didn't I? This is true. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. So where did you two meet up? Um, actually, I'm going to have to rely on Mike on this one because, you know, we, we've just been gone for so damn long. Um, we had mutual friends, actually. Well, no, we didn't find out about that until later, did we? That, that, oh, yeah, that is actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, I think we first met at a BVNA meeting. Junior. It almost have to be. Yeah. Congress uh, junkie. Sorry. Something, something along those lines. And we, we seem to, we seem to get on reasonably well. And mm-hmm. then it was a BVNA meeting again, probably five years later or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my partner, Trudy, said that she wanted to go and meet this guy over here. And I said, but I've already met Mark t- this trip. We need to go over here. And it turned out that uh, Mark and Trudy had known each other for even longer oh, than, wow. than me yeah. knowing either of them. Tru- Trudy had been in Saudi Arabia as well, hadn't she? Yeah. So Trudy lived on the same compound as you. Yep. And she knew you when you were a little bitty, bitty six yep. footer. Yep. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, because Mark's always been more than six foot tall, you see, I think, Julian. and Which, you know, which made it rather um, odd that you were in charge of the short courses. It was. And then what's more entertaining is that, uh, as, you know, I'm six foot six in the short course manager. Uh, the College of Animal Welfare's academic manager, ergo the long course manager, was probably about, what, five foot five? Hey, nothing wrong with lovely, five completely five. lovely, and we're private to middle. Yeah, I just you know, short course manager, long course manager, and I, you know, she came out yay high. Brilliant oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Actually, I have one. I have one tiny, tiny, tiny claim to fame uh, with the College of Animal Welfare. Yeah, what's let, that? Uh, let me see if I can send that picture over. Well, you, you ever see that uh, green picture with uh, anything a vet nurse can do, vets can do too? Okay, let me see. Yes, I've, got to, yes. I've got to allow you to share the screen. You're going to show us a picture, are you, Mark? Just, just one, just one. Okay, go for it. All right, share screen. There we go. So anything, anything a vet nurse can do, vets can do too. Of course, it'll take three vets six times as long, seven times as much, and make ten times the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I see. That's brilliant. So you were behind that, way. Yeah, everyone cuts off the College of Animal Welfare. You know, everyone just cuts that off when they shamelessly share it. And um, a, col- a colleague of mine did the graphics, but I wrote the text. That's great. That's, That's brilliant. brilliant. So that is your <laughs> meme, is it? Well, pretty well, like it, it wasn't just, you know, it, it was the two of us that put it together. But yeah, uh, yeah, it is. So it's like, you know, that's my one tiny, the one time in my life I ever went viral. That's, well, that's you know, I, I love I love that quote. I really do. And yeah. just, just because a few people listening to this may not know what uh, what the College of Animal welfare is or even what a vet nurse is because in america they, they don't have vet nurses do they, they have vet techs right? i believe right. in, in a lot of the european think, countries they, they have, i think they do but, have a designation for a veterinary nurse as well they do now do they yeah yeah i think they do because there's a little bit of a battle going on between uh the vet techs and the vet nurses and the veterinary assistants um hmm all arguing about various qualifications and that's all a little bit like we have in the uk where we've got the uh, registered vet nurses looking to protect the title of Mm. registered vet nurse uh, whereas anybody can call themselves a veterinary nurse and the extension of their responsibilities to hopefully for some of them move them back into some minor surgery procedures and and bits and pieces like that so i'm I'm not entirely sure but that's my sad understanding of it right i'm fairly sure in in, in most of the european states that they they don't have 
Yeah, uh, nurses, uh, in, in Europe, nurses. there are some uh, veterinary mm -hmm. nurses, but especially in Central and Eastern Europe, not so much. So, mm -hmm. right. so what about Hungary? Um, Hungary, there they do have a, a veterinary, uh, what they call sokshegid, so basically a technical assistance, but it's basically a veterinary assistant position. We're incredibly proud in our country of uh, the veterinary nurses, the registered veterinary nurses, and they are uh, such an in incredibly important part of the profession. Absolutely. Uh, and, Absolutely. and the veterinary profession wouldn't be what, what it is without them. We, we could not do the procedures we do, we, we couldn't yeah. give the, the level of care we do without them uh, and so I, I you know big shout out to, to any veterinary nurses just because you are the backbone of the profession uh, and the College of Animal Welfare is, is one of the uh, few providers of veterinary one, well not few there are there are quite a few providers of, of veterinary they're, they're one of the bigger ones in the country though. they're one of the bigger ones yeah yeah uh, I don't know who the first was um I did find out the other day because back in the 80s when veterinary nursing became a, a thing rather than the royal animal nursing auxiliaries yeah the runners they became yeah, yeah. They, they went from being frogs to vet nurses runner of course is, uh, is latin for frog um then i think it was some of the midland uh, colleges that, that, that took the uh, the mantle at first and then and pushed them out. But uh, the, the profession has, has gone from strength to strength still since, mm -hmm. since then. Yeah, well, uh, with, CAW with was founded things. originally in 1989. It was originally part of Wood Green's um, College of Animal Welfare, and then they then they spun off a few later. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it must have been one of the one of the first, wasn't it? I mean, uh, Barbara Cooper, uh, the founder, she actually wrote the original nursing manual. Right. So yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if she was one of the first. She was a formidable lady, wasn't she, Barbara? Well, still is. Still, still is. Still, still, is, still is, is, is she, I do apologize, yeah. Barbara. If you're out there, I do apologize. Of Barbara course, Cooper is still very much around. And uh, yeah, wow, yeah, what an amazing woman. You wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of her. Not that we did. Not until just now. Not until just now. Yes, right. I expect to hear from her lawyers tomorrow. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. There we go. So, 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 in a, in a beautiful political answer, then, Mark, you've worked your way all the way round, and avoided the question, sort of. So, are you an expat vet, as in expat American vet? Is that how you perceive yourself? Oh, you're no, surely expat Hungarian. Just expat in general, to be honest. Okay. Expat I mean, of every country you've ever been to, aren't you? Really. Well, it's 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 the funny thing is that uh, what is the difference between you know and this 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 could be going to thorny 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 territory. Okay, but, we like thorny. Okay, well you know what is the difference between expat and migrant? I've gone to other countries and I get jobs and I get paid for my work and then I go to another country. Okay. Of course, when you don't like that, it's it's a migrant. When you do like that, and it's an expat. Mark Hedberg, nomad, I'd say. Nomad is cool. I like nomad. Nomad, yeah. Nomad, yeah. And, and Mark, at some stage or other, you were a volunteer for the BSAPA, were you? I was indeed. Um, the served as secretary for Kent Region. And while I was down there in Dover, um, basically it was uh, one of those times where we they needed volunteers. It was organizing, continuing education. Mm -hmm. And I'd did that for long enough, then a job, the, the, job, the job for organizing uh, CPD for nurses came up at the College of Animal Welfare and on the strength of that, and that, that, that was four years that I really, really enjoyed. I mean, it was, it was a CPD uh, program, yes, but in a sense, it was, it, was, it was CPD sales. I mean, we were selling education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, I learned a great deal there. It was a wonderful team there. And I, I, I still have fond memories there. Well, yeah. Yeah. We, we've benefited from volunteering as well, haven't we, Julian? Because we, 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 we reproduced this show and then we were very, uh, well, quite honoured to be invited to uh, chair numerous sessions at the uh, Vets for Ukraine. We were chuffed a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. That was fantastic. Wasn't and it? I enjoyed some of the lectures very much. The mm -hmm. lectures were excellent, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. They were oh, really, really good. So, you know, tip, tip of the hat yeah. there. 
Well, they invited me to BSAVA Congress as a chair for uh, quite a few times. They did. Uh, they did indeed. Yeah. Because yeah. well, you know, I, I did. I did the odd practice management lecture, but where where they had me come in was kind of like a master of ceremonies is probably the wrong term. But uh, uh, the a a, a the I will never forget the introduction. People yeah. weren't really paying attention, and you know they're chit chatting, and so you know you know excuse me, you know it's time for the lecture to start, and you know people were just you know first lecture of the morning, they weren't really paying attention. So what do you do? Let's get ready to rumble. Oh, I like that. I thought, That's your good morning Vietnam. Much, yeah. much, but I make a very <laughs> poor Robin Williams, so I thought it was you know like I said that got everyone's attention and they oh yep. We're, Fantastic. I think, I think I'd just go, oi, you, you and you, you can leave by the door you came in. And if anybody else wants to carry on talking, you can go out the same door. But I don't have the accent for that. Oi, 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 you, you. Oi. It doesn't sound right. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Not at all. So when are you coming back to the UK, Mark? Um, when they invite me, I suppose. Oh. Do, do, do they do that anymore? Yeah. <laughs> no, kidding aside, um, I emigrated uh, to uh, Hungary um, July of 2018. I was going to say, it's got to be four or five years ago since no, you... Yeah, but uh, yeah, coming... Uh, yeah, July will be four years. Right. And so it was uh, basically just a short version after CAW. I, I had one more stint in clinical, and then after clinical, I went back out to uh, the support role. Right. Mm -hmm. And then went over to, to Hungary. So yeah. what, what are you up to now then? Um, well, up until about last Wednesday, I was in technical sales. Up until last Wednesday. Okay, yes. Yeah. Two, two questions followed from then. Firstly, what was technical sales? And secondly, obviously, what happened after next Wednesday, last Wednesday? Oh, okay. Um, which one? Well, basically, is that I'm in between roles at the moment. I needed a bit of a break, a um, bit, bit of a overwork slash burnout slash basically burning 150% over the pandemic, and I just needed a rest. Okay. But uh, it that's was a, That's a gutsy move. It is, isn't it? Moving to Hungary? No. Or moving to Saudi? No, just, or, just, going, just going, I need a rest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go between jobs. Well, you know, I'm not going to do it for like, you know, a year. And I mean, basically, I'm going to take a, you know, you know, a long vacation, basically. So, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, you know, gutsy, I suppose. Nah. Okay, that's fair enough. Tell me, Mark, you, you, you claim you've actually heard previous episodes of Veterinary Ramblings. I have. I have. Yeah. So you'll be familiar with this then? Oh, you've uh, whipped your uh, uh, timer out. He's oh, whipped yeah. it out. He's oh, whipped yeah. it out. Are you allowed to say clock anymore? As long as you pronounce <laughs> it right. <laughs> so, what what are you uh, what are you going to do your sixty second CPD on for us, Mark? Well, what I was going to do is that I work in technical sales. Okay. And look, and aside from being on a career break, basically I sell uh, technical equipment to research labs and assorted universities for pharmacological, physiology, and all kinds of preclinical roles. Right. So uh, basically, that's a sales job, even though it's a bit of a complicated sales job. And so what I what I often get asked is, uh, well, how do I get a job outside of clinical practice? You see all okay. these uh, stay, go and diversify as, as uh, one group. And there are another, all, all sorts of other um, uh, people working on giving people support and advice for leaving clinical practice. I'm, I don't run a company or anything like that, but I just thought I'd mention uh, getting a sales job outside of clinical practice. So Mark Hedberg, 60 Second CPD on getting a sales job outside of clinical practice, starting now. Veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses probably hate admitting this, but clinical consulting is actually a sales role. We are the people in contact with our clients and we provide a service in exchange for payments. We have to get to know the owners with the sick pets, get them on board with a solution for their problem and make the plan happen. This is what a sales representative does. Still with me? Right, do a stock take. What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? Consults, diagnostics, surgery, Get to know the companies or the people that provide these services or the equipment. Meet them at your clinic. Offer them a coffee at conferences. Attend their CPD. Learn what you can about them. Show a genuine interest in what they do and how they do it. 
What are some other typical needs or frequent problems? Learn how to tackle them and you're a step ahead of the pack. Volunteer at veterinary associations. It's a good way to gain experience organizing events and you can establish relationships with suppliers. You don't want to be a name on a CV. You want to be that helpful and interesting person they can always turn to. Let go of your preconceptions. My first technical sales job was in a completely different field to what I expected. It was not what I expected, but exactly what I needed. Done. Excellent. Wow. And you've nailed it. Very, very good. You have nailed it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we so you, you clearly love what you do, Mark. I've been accused of that. <laughs> but yeah, <sighs> it's, it's kind of weird in that uh, you get so many people in the veterinary world. Well, they got into the whole veterinary side of things because, well, you know, we like animals more mm -hmm. than we love people. I'm kind of the other way around. I like animals, okay, but people fascinate me. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, oh, well, you know, I'm great with animals and terrible with people. Well, you know, Mrs. Jones has just come in with her very, very ill dog or cat. And you you now have to tell them, you know, Fluffy is going to have to take that long road down Rainbow Bridge. All right, you know, no stress now. And in, you know, and with the greatest of respects to veterinary education, uh, up until fairly recently, we weren't really prepared for that. We are so no. we are trained as scientists, and then we are thrown into the most emotional profession you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. And yep. so, you know, is it any wonder that the rates of uh, mental health problems are skyrocketing? There are people leaving the profession because of not just the long hours or the, the not so great pay, but just the absolute sheer mental and psychological exhaustion, compassion fatigue, sometimes it's a chronic PTSD. Um, it, it's, it's just, in a sense, it was something that we weren't really prepared for. We learned the clinical mm -hmm. side brilliantly, but uh, uh, you know, there are some universities now that are talking about consult skills and small business skills, and you know, mm -hmm. it, yes, but you know, I qualified 15 years ago and you know, we had a couple of lectures on calculating, you know, the price of a cesarean, whoop de doo, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, get training us and sending us out as clinicians and expecting us to run small animal practices is with all due respect, like asking Mike to take this uh, big pack of orthopedic uh, equipment and go, you know, screw some pins into one of Julian's patients. Mm -hmm. That would clinically be completely unacceptable with the greatest of respect. It was, it was as we found out, yes. Yeah, like, hang on a minute. I just, just because I screwed the femur hard onto the tibial plateau. Exactly, yeah. And, and so and expecting the, the veterinarians and, and nurses the table. to run a small business yeah. with minimal prior preparation, how is that okay? Interesting. You're right. And, and it puts so much pressure on, on the whole team. And mm -hmm. in this day and age, we, we talk about mental health, we talk about mental ill health in, in quite a banded, superficial way. But actually, we, we all, I think, in the profession have days that we we struggle with yeah and those days are getting commoner and commoner aren't they i, th I think you're on something here because veterinary the veterinary profession is full of high achievers yeah it's full of really intelligent well-educated mm -hmm. high achievers who are used to succeeding mm -hmm. we don't deal with failure at all well and we're also pretty bad yeah. at compromise yeah if we get a if we're going to be in an exam at school, then we're heartbroken for weeks yeah. afterwards. And I mean this with the greatest of respect to my colleagues who are doing incredible work in supremely difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. we are brilliant clinicians, but we're not great business owners. You know, we, you know, there's generations of us guilty about taking money. Mm -hmm. And if we were if we were so brilliant at running practices, the corporates would never have had a chance. You know, we'd just be too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, every, everybody's got different skills and different skill sets and different yeah. knowledge bases. And, and what doesn't help sometimes is, uh, oh, you work for a corporate. Have you sold out? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Julian, you, you haven't sold out, have you? Of course you, not. You failed. You failed the innate. Yeah, um, it's hard enough without other professionals saying, ooh, you know, you couldn't make it in India, huh? Absolutely, you failed the innate altruism. 
of the profession mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by setting out. Except you know, from a business perspective, hey, well done. Mm. You've, you've built your business, you've had an exit strategy, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, somebody has very kindly agreed to pay you lots of money for that. Yeah. And there's no wrong in that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, if, if the world, if we could pay for everything in hugs, I would love that because my daughter would own the world. You know, she, she does mm -hmm. the best hugs ever. <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? Uh, until that wonderful day, unfortunately, we must, you know, you know, have that, you know. Uh, hard hard cash has to be right? part of it, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 And, and so basically we are we are not trained for the job, you know, clinically, yes, but but for the the business side of things, we are not trained in the business running. We are finally now being trained uh in the client relationship side of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then we ran into a pandemic and people with sick pets under uh once in a lifetime stress, well, that's a bad combination. Hurt people lash out. Mm -hmm. they, and they we, do. The veterinarians they, and the they, nurses are at ground zero. I think all practices have had more complaints over the last couple of years than they've ever had mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. stress levels are higher still yeah. it's difficult sometimes to work out why those stress levels are so high isn't it because on some level we don't like to admit that there's a small voice inside all of us wondering if we're really actually genuinely good enough and that voice hurts imposter mm -hmm. syndrome in all of us mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 when we've it's all we've ever wanted since the year dot. And then we come face to face with, yeah, some Mondays suck. Oh, Mondays are the worst ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, we're not getting into a song here, are we? Because I don't like Mondays either. <laughs> well, actually, I was, I always, try, whenever I think of, of Tell Me Why I Don't Like Mondays, and, and uh, I love that song, but it's a sad song. I then think of Manic Mondays and the Bangles, and that makes me smile, so I'm okay there. Okay, fair enough. Talking about smiling, talking mm -hmm. about smiling, that was a cracking 60-second CPD, that, Mark. Thank you. It's fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Have, really you got, have you got a certificate for us? I have. I have. Excellent. As chance would have it, as pure chance would have it. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. What, 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 what have we got here? Certificate of Technical Prowess. Okay. It says, this certifies that as much as Mike and I are old farts, <laughs> we can still understand technology. And you can see I purposefully misspelled technology so that we can't really understand Aww. it. But then we've got, look, see, I, I started off as a vet at the beginning <laughs> of the digital era. And here's a, here's a picture of a cat's foot showing more digits than it should. Oh, brilliant. So this, this is a cat with, uh, with polydactyly. Yeah, uh, with with, with uh, six. That didn't seven, look like one. That didn't look like a flying dinosaur. Seven times. Absolutely. Um, that's not a flying dinosaur. You can't fool me. I, no, it's not, is it? But here we go. And and here is a. Tr this is what you're trying to do, Mark. This is. Um, now you had a raspberry, didn't you? Oh, I did. Yeah. So this is this is a phone linked up with a mouse, and it's got a banana sitting on the raspberry there. Oh, brilliant! So um, so as close as I could. There's a tent there to demonstrate the nomadic life that you've had. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm touched. I am touched. Coffee, little, little heart uh, put in the, in the coffee by a barista because you mentioned coffee in your 60-second CPD. Oh, yeah, well, coffee is proof that God exists. He loves us and he wants us to be happy. Okay. Well, there you go. You see, I'll take that. Uh, there's, a, there's a blackberry because I didn't have a raspberry, so there's a blackberry there. Mm -hmm. drumming in the whole blackberry. Oh, perfect. And, um, oh, look, there's and, Mike. Uh, there's Mark, yeah. <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> well, I, I knew instantly that was Mark. No, no, it's Mike. It's I'm pretty Mike. sure. This, you know, yeah, is... I know for sure it's Mark. You know why? You're going you to argue it out. The, you know, you know how I know it's me? Go on, then. I got hair on my head. That's true. A good point, actually. There's you. Yep. Yeah. And, and, there's, and there's a desert. There oh, very go. nice. Lots of sand. So, Something for everyone, I think, in that one. So is that a Markak? <laughs> I am in the presence of be. masters, you know. I, but for, anybody, for anybody, for anybody who's who's listening, that, that was a picture of a monkey. So uh, there we go. I don't know. I, 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 um, have, I have richly gotten what I deserve for one too many bald jokes. There we go. Bald. Bald. So, what are you on about? Oh, very good. Who's bald? Who's, what do you think? I don't know. What's he saying? 
I'm lo- it's lost lost on me. Perfect. No, let's keep it that way. Yeah, no, <laughs> lost, lost yeah. there. What's the other one? Uh, but anyway, there's a CBD certificate. Thank Fantastic. you very much, Mark. For your I, I'm, I am genuinely honored, pleased, and cheerfully delighted that you guys invited me. I had a wonderful time and still can't quite believe that, that you invited me because just, oh, geez, it's like, wow, thanks. Oh, are you, are you Thank going you. then? You. Well, oh, on, that note, on that note, if he thinks he's going, let's... Uh... <laughs> and of course, you can download the certificate off our uh, website, veterinaryramblings.com, um, and present that to the RCVS as proof of your uh, your attendance and your uh, your CPD thing. If you've liked That's what you've heard, a whole minute, a whole minute towards whole your, minute, uh, yeah, your yeah, annual yeah. CPD. If you've liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. Click that subscribe button because it really helps. It helps us a lot. And uh, like and share. And if you've got any ideas for future, let us know. Get in touch. Mark Hedberg, thank you very, very much indeed. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you again. And thank you for joining us. I've been enormously chuffed to be here and thank you all for having me. You're and we're chuffed a little bit to have had you on. May your dog go with you. May, May your dog, your go, dog with go with you. you. Cheers. Ow, cut. <laughs> How was it, Mark? You're right. I, 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 I it, it did, it didn't. What's the word I'm looking for? It went a different direction than I thought, and it went the exactly right direction. If that makes any sense at all, it makes it makes perfect sense because actually, that, that's that's kind of what it does. It, it really. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we got the name right when we called it veterinary ramblings. It, it, it takes the same way, isn't it? But uh, yeah, uh, Mark, I don't often use the word awesome, but you were. Thank you. Oh. Ah. Uh, uh, I, 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 you, know, you're, you are far too kind. There are no, 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 well no, aware not, there not at all. Been, not at all, Mark. The, not at the all. time whizzed past, and it, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. chatting to you.